Good afternoon. To set the stage for our symposium, I'm first going to give a brief and quick overview of some of the effects of hurricanes on bird populations and their habitats. And I'm going to point out where the various presentations in this symposium fit into those um, effects and where these uh, presenters uh, have contributed to the advancement of our knowledge. Now, I think all of you are well aware that the Caribbean Basin, the Gulf Coast, southeastern United States are re regions of high tropical cyc cyclones or hurricanes or tropical storms. It's these are also regions in which there's been baseline, that is studies underway before the arrival of these storms, allowing before and after comparisons. Some of these baseline studies have been of long duration, in fact, are still ongoing, as you'll learn uh, from this symposium. Now, we can start by asking some rather simple questions. Why do hurricane responses differ? and our response is predictable. To address these questions, it helps to uh, visualize them. And this is a diagram here taken from Jeff Zimmerman and his uh, co-authors, nice paper, 1996, that helps us visualize the effects uh, and the responses of hurricanes or to hurricanes. On the y-axis, they've graphed the change in magnitude against years since Hurricane Hugo. Each of the separate curves represents a co ecosystem component, uh, either a biotic or a biotic uh, component of the environment of the subtropical wet forest in the Luquillo Mountains. The baseline is shown clearly here. You can see displacement in A and B, they actually increase, although they return uh, to baseline rather quickly. In contrast, you see here catastrophic declines, although the recovery or the return to baseline is quite different. C, in fact, shows a very rapid recovery that overshoots the baseline and moves uh, to another, um, another state. The others, however, are much slower. Now, to put these response trajectories into perspective, it's helpful to break them down into issues of resistance and resilience. And resistance, I'm defining here after Wade and Willie, as the degree to which characteristics of an ecosystem or population remain unaffected by disturbance. Now, they provided in a paper they published in 2012, a nice diagram shown here where they graph the system characteristic, the baseline shown here, and then the time after the hurricane to return to the baseline for three different response trajectories. So you can see that A is uh, relatively resistant, uh, very little displacement from the baseline, in contrast to B and C, uh, they show considerable displacement from the baseline. So we would say the resistance of population A is greater than B or C. To put birds into this scheme, you'll want to hear the talk by Jaime Collazo. Jaime and his colleagues had radio tagged captive reared Hispaniola and parrots wild in the Dominican Republic prior to the arrival of Hurricane George's. They had baseline data. They were able to go back shortly after the passage of the storm and remarkably, despite the power of that storm, found that all but I think one uh, of those uh, parrots showing remarkable, at least initial resistance. However, uh, as his talk will point out, uh, survivorship did decline. In contrast, and sadly, the Puerto Rican parrot, in response to the recent hurricanes, uh, two populations showed uh, massive declines. They showed relatively little resistance to the, sh the storm, although there were big differences between the two populations, as Tom White uh, will point out in his talk. <clears throat> populations or ecosystems uh, can differ in their resilience, that is, the recovery time. And here's a diagram, uh, again, from Wade and Willig, where we show the system characteristics, the three response 
trajectory shown here. And you'll see that A returns to baseline more quickly than does B, and B more quickly than C. All right, so differences in resilience here. D, however, does not return to the baseline. It moves to a different state or population level. Bird populations can fit uh, this scheme, and it, you'll want to hear the talk by Frank Rivera Milan. And he points out that the Elfinwoods warbler, uh, which he and collaborators have followed, an endemic bird, Puerto Rico, uh, he studied them in the Loquillo Mountains, showed relatively high resilience. That is, they returned very quickly to the, uh, the baseline. However, the baseline had changed and was fluctuating throughout uh, the course of the study. So uh, there's some complexities here. At the other extreme, Frank points out uh, that the Bahama parrot in the Bahamas uh, shows relatively low resilience. That is, it takes uh, quite a while to get back to the, to the baseline. Well, we know that there are a number of factors that cause the bird responses to vary. Uh, one of the most important ones, number one, are the environmental factors. These can be the uh, storm traits or characteristics of the storm. Uh, we know that a class one hurricane is uh, far more deadly than a class uh, four or five. Uh, and rainfall differs among these storms. Uh, Maria Oriarte, taking a long-term perspective and looking at the forest structures uh, and composition in Puerto Rico, compares the response of these forests to uh, several hurricanes differing uh, in their um, meteorological uh, traits. You want to hear that. It is important. Site traits are also uh, important. These can be the physical or the vegetation traits. The physical uh, are traits such as um, topography, elevation, slope, aspect. And the talk by Nicasio Vigna Davila will uh, summarize some of these traits. and the response of the birds in eastern Cuba uh, to hurricanes. In Puerto Rico, Jess Zimmerman uh, summarizes 30 years uh, of studies of the um, forest there and the response to disturbance identifies some of the uh, traits and responses of species and structure and forest types uh, to these storms. David Brown, his talk, compares the bird communities on the Gulf Coast before and after a hurricane and looks at the effects of forest, forest structure and how that changes the bird community. Disturbance history is a factor that's very important, that is legacy, but to have a perspective to be able to talk about disturbance history requires some history. These need to be long-term studies. Uh, Bob Wade in his talk will talk about long-term studies uh, in the Lukeo Mountains and response of birds uh, to disturbances, both hurricanes and droughts, as will John Faborg in his uh, summary of effects in the dry forests in Puerto Rico. Spatial scale is another factor that's important. Birds in small habitat patches are going to suffer more than birds in large habitat patches. Also, isolation of the habitat patches are important. Other important characteristics that affect uh, response trajectories include the species or population traits. Uh, start with reproduction. Banaquit, Cerebral flaviola uh, are multi-brooded and uh, no surprise they recover much more quickly than do parrots uh, which have only one brood uh, per year. Uh, the talks again by Rivera Milan which I mentioned earlier and the talk by Clint Bull uh, review some of these traits. Clint's uh, looks at uh, banaquit responses uh, through several disturbances. Diet type and specialization, very important. Birds that feed on nectar, fruit, or seeds are going to suffer more than those birds that feed on insects or vertebrate prey. Jose Salguero and his collaborators looked at this issue in their studies of the effects of recent hurricanes on birds in mid-elevation forests uh, in Puerto Rico. Habitat type and specialization are critical issues. Birds in resilient habitats are likely to have populations that are resilient. Uh, birds in low resilient habitats are likely to show low resilience. Population size, no surprise, as we all realize small populations are at risk. And unfortunately for many of our endemic species and subspecies in the Caribbean, uh, 
small populations are uh, characteristic of these birds. You'll want to hear the talk by Mike Akrish on the tropical woodpeckers uh, in the island of San Salvador, very small population as uh, do the uh, endangered uh, sharp-shinned hawks in uh, Puerto Rico that Russell Thorsten uh, talks about. Species interactions uh, can be disrupted. Uh, herbivory, predation, parasitism, competition, all can be disrupted by these storms. Unfortunately, uh, there are relatively few studies that have looked at these issues, but nonetheless, they are very important. Symbiotic relationships, mutualisms can be disrupted. And we have one nice example from Ethan Tamales in his talk where he looks at a plant pollinator uh, system that's been disrupted in the island of Dominica after recent hurricanes and directional selection has changed having a potential for changing morphological uh, traits of both the birds and the flowers involved. Finally there are conservation activities that we can enact or put into place to help rescue sensitive populations. These interventions uh, include increasing productivity, and this is routinely done with a Puerto Rican parrot where they provide artificial nest cavities uh, and they do captive releases of aviary produced birds. Tom White will summarize some of this in his talk. I'd mentioned the endangered subspecies of sharp-shinned hawk in Puerto Rico. Uh, it's now a uh, focus of um, captive rearing and nest management effort uh, since the last hurricanes, and uh, it's uh, quite um, successful, as you'll see if you hear Helena Weaver's talk. Finally, you can feed the birds afterwards to try and replace some of the lost food supplies after the storms. And this was done in a rather ambitious uh, project, Operation Feeder Rescue, which is uh, a multi-island bird feeding effort by islanders uh, in the aftermath of the recent hurricanes. It involved uh, providing hummingbird feeders to uh, the the people on 18 different islands and also providing bird seed and folks uh, went to it to help rescue the birds. So this is just a quick overview. I thank you for your interest and I thank you for your participation. Thank you very much.